Welcome to the last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 podcast, brought to you by Deep Soul Man Productions. Get it once, once it comes up. Um, and I think that's about, you have any questions for me before we get started? I don't think so. And if I do, I'll just ask them. We'll, we'll keep it spicy, Scott. I'll just ask them in the middle of the interview yeah. or conversation. I prefer to think of this just as a conversation. And that's so. all it is. Yeah. If you see me looking down while you're speaking, I'm just trying to stay ahead with the questions I'm going to ask. So I'm not being rude. Uh, and also, I interrupt a lot. So th- forgive me if you might say something that sparks a, you know, oh, so now what about that again? You know, so don't, don't hold, please don't hold that against me. But. Anyway, um, well, I can't promise they won't hold it against you, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm um, going to be a tough client here, Scott. Oh, okay, well, cool. <laughs> hey, this is Scott Townsend. Welcome back to the last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 podcast. And I have with me today a friend from long ago. Of course, all of them are from long ago at this point. Uh, Lori List Jackson. Lori, how's it going? Uh, pretty good, Scott. Pretty good. Good to so be here. Where are we? Uh, where are we uh, talking to you from? Where are you? Where are you coming uh, from? I am specifically coming from my porch in Bernie, Texas, which is oh. just north of San Antonio. Oh, my brother lives there, as you know uh yeah and uh the parkers i guess that's kind of a wild story uh what happened there did you saw the interview i did with rail and gail and well i i so she is engaged to um we have good friends neighbors and she is engaged to their son and uh when you posted the podcast interview with her i you know it was one of those wait a minute how does scott How does Scott know, how how do we have a connection here in Bernie? And I believe her aunt is your wife's sister, if that's correct, that there's a family connection. Her mom is my sister-in-law's sister. (laughs) Yeah, okay. (laughs) Her mom and my brother's wife are are sisters, yeah. Okay, okay. But Well, uh, they're both... um, she's engaged our friend David and they're both incredibly talented musicians Mm -hmm. um, and doing quite a bit of traveling and touring. And uh, so it's been fun to see that uh, connection because they certainly deserve all the exposure they can get. Oh yeah. I totally agree. I think they were in Tulsa this last weekend or she was at least. She was, I'm not sure that they always travel and tour together, but um, yeah. Yeah, they're 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 active in this part of the country, I believe. So this is this is all about Lori List Jackson. So this show, it's all yours. Well, it's it's going to be fascinating, Scott. So <laughs> I don't know what to say. You know, just strap in for the ride. Because, right. Uh, all right. Well, uh, you so know, when uh, you when you reached out, I told you I can think of uh, three hundred people that might be a more interesting interview <laughs> than myself, but. Um, also living in the land of say yes to the things that make you uncomfortable. So I said, yes. So oh, here yeah, we are. There you go. Um, looking back on, I don't know if you've seen any other interviews and stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, I just, you know, when you look back on, you know, we're 39 years down the road here and we got the 40 year reunion coming up next year and reunions are always fraught with <clears throat> all kinds of expectations or whatnot. When you were in, when we were in uh, seniors in high school, when people ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? That stupid question, what was your answer? You know, I think I lacked a lot of clarity, but we had done a, um, a one of those assessments. My parents sent me to some place in Tulsa that sort of assesses your interest and your talents. And uh, what I came out of that with was photography. And, uh, you know, that's an interesting way to make a living. Um, so I, the creative aspect of that always resonated, but it wasn't where my career track necessarily took me. Um, and I wound up with a major from OU in journalism, advertising, and political science. Hmm. Um, 
And then my first job out of college was with Fidelity Investments in Dallas. So, you know, it's a logical career track to major in advertising and then go to work for a major financial institution. In there, I was a registered rep. Um, so I was sitting on the front lines of people with questions about financial instruments. Uh, hmm. And there was a pretty steep learning curve in that first job. Who were the friends you ran around with in high school? You know, weren't we lucky, Scott, to go to high school with some amazing people? Um, I, I, I'm hesitant to run the list because I'm afraid I'll leave somebody out because yeah. uh, just really amazing friends. Uh, Tandy and I lived around the corner and uh, we were uh, walking Tandy buddies. Tucker. So Tandy Tucker, now um, Tandy Holker. Mm. And uh, we, do see, we do see the Holkers from time to time, um, John and Jim were great friends growing up and then Tandy and I were good friends and hmm. uh, then we wound up marrying and so when we get together it's a lot of fun because it's one of those couple relationships where uh, everybody works individually and um, our kids get along really well. Uh, they hmm. named their son Jackson Holker and we have always laughed that they named him after us. I don't think that was in fact true but when uh we had Wyatt we we joked with them that we were going to name our son Holker Jackson to correspond with their Jackson Holker so um Tandy um Trisha Hines Lisa Hutchins Rhonda Rhonda Rizzo uh Christy Brooks Sandra Yeager Lori Markle Dana Brock um Wonderful friends who were guys, Jeff Blair, Jimmy Webb, Richard Whitmire, um, Chris Stark. Yeah. We had like a little little Woodland Park crew that grew up together and uh, and uh, tore each other's lawns up. There was a there was a rainy weekend, uh, probably somewhere junior senior high, and um, oh, I think it was Christy, and I had a friend from out of town, and Jeff and Jimmy and. Uh, it had rained and rained and rained and what started off as like a little mud fight in the backyard evolved into we were ripping up turf and flinging like sod at each other and <laughs> tore the backyard up and I was really sure the parents like, oh, were glad about that God, my mom's gonna kill me on this and actually she was watching out the window and just like I I don't know what to say I'm just gonna let him go you know 17 year olds that are having a mud fight in the backyard I'm just gonna I'm gonna let it ride and we'll fix the damage later so <laughs> that's yeah. so funny so you were uh I'm looking down here the uh FHA officer and uh, <laughs> well uh, you know high school rep and the student council yeah there I you go I had to go back and yeah. renew, refresh my memory on um and when, uh, yeah, apparently, apparently I was on FHA, yeah. Future Homemakers of America, which um, I don't know. I mean, I think the highlight of that whole experience would be Mrs. Smith, who was just an amazing teacher. And, uh, and I think proof of how great she was, was it seemed like she equally engaged the males and the females in the class. Um, now I remember she was, Billy. She was the uh, 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 home ec teachers or, yeah. Right? yeah yeah family I think it was called family living family living family living Sue Reynolds was the other teacher I happen to have Sue Smith um <laughs> you know those two teachers I, have had more mentions in yeah. these interviews than anybody else you know I think having watched my kids go through my youngest just graduated from high school in May and I could always sense uh, when they had a teacher who was really invested in the content, like they just really loved what they were teaching, that um, my kids did better. It's just like they bought into, mm -hmm. all right, I, I'm here for the ride with you. And um, I think that's a characteristic that both both Sue's had, that they they were passionate about what they were teaching. And I think they loved the students. And I think they felt like what they were teaching was so beyond just the academic world, but but really right. life skills. Um, so I just think I bought into the I bought into that. And Sue Smith was truly, and I'm one of the most loving, caring uh, educators we had at Call High. She was really great. And John, 
I, I, I happened to marry Scott, the um, president of the 1979-1980 Future Homemakers of America. John was president of that class oh. for their FHA. <laughs> and I think actually went to one of the conventions. Um, so oh, we have wow. a good laugh. We have a good laugh over that when we discuss dividing household chores. I remind him, you were trained for this, my friend. Yeah. You were trained for this. Now, is he from Bartlesville? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So bring us up to speed. This, after graduation, we'll go back to high school in just a minute. After graduation, kind of give us a tour of of your life here in the, in the next. Mm -hmm. you know, sum up your life in five minutes. What uh, what happened? What's happened in the last thirty nine years? <laughs> what have you been up to since nineteen eighty two? Okay, so rapid fire. Graduated, went to OU. <clears throat> graduated from OU uh, with my actually graduated from OU and I didn't really want to go to uh, Dallas because everybody went to Dallas. So I packed up my resume and I flew to New York and I started knocking, I gave myself a week and I started knocking on doors in Manhattan Plenty with of my resume in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was not a well thought out strategy because apparently you don't walk into the big ad agencies fresh out of school from Oklahoma and slap a resume down and get hired. So that was an interesting learning experience. Came home with my tail tucked between my legs a little bit and um, and uh, needed to find a job. And so wound up in Dallas, lived with Lisa Hutchins um, for as long as it took for me to get, uh, to, to become gainfully employed and get my own apartment. And um, went to work for Fidelity Investments in Dallas. And I moved with them to Cincinnati, Ohio. And then I moved with them to Boston, which is where their headquarters were. And um, I didn't last long in Boston, Scott. Mm. It wasn't really my uh, jam. I uh, worked uh, like a swing shift because that's a 24 seven operation. I was by myself. I got off work at one in the morning, had to take the train to, I lived in Cambridge, had to take the train, walk a mile at two in the morning from Harvard <laughs> Square. It just, uh, I, I think I lasted maybe six months and um, mm. packed up my stuff and moved myself to Colorado. And I skied until my money ran out. And then once again, had to have a job and, uh, connected with some great people there in Colorado and lived in Colorado until um, 2007. But while I was in Colorado, John and I had, um, we, he was my first car date, uh, was OU, uh, not OU, College High Sooner, the big rivalry football game. And right. he invited me, I, didn't we have like a bonfire or like, there was like a whole week of activities it seemed yeah. like. Now we didn't have the football game our senior year because they shut that thing down. Yeah, uh, this would have been my, John was a senior. So I would have been a, a uh, freshman. Freshman, okay. Sophomore. So that makes- Sophomore. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he was my first car date and and we um, we dated a little bit there in high school, we dated a little bit like my senior year, we dated a little bit in college. And um, he had always told me don't, don't get married without talking to me first. <laughs> and um, so at one point in time, we had the conversation and uh, he decided I was in Colorado and not moving, he was in Dallas. And so he moved to Colorado. And uh, we got engaged in September. And we were married on December 1st. We were not interested in a long wedding or a long engagement or a big wedding. And we got married at the, um, at the chapel in Beaver Creek, Colorado. Hmm. And it was just sort of one of those, if you can come, great. But This is happening. This is happening, yeah. So we celebrated our 30 year wedding anniversary in December. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my wife and I, we yeah. eloped. And we were both of my brothers had big weddings. Her brother and sisters had big weddings. And so when we were talking, <clears throat> I was like, what do you think about eloping? And she was like, mm -hmm. let's do it. 
And uh, so, yeah, we just hauled off in 29 years, 20, 28 years. I better get that number right. 28 years later, still going strong. So every once in a while, congratulations. Have you ever regretted the decision that we made to shoot? And neither one of us regretted it. It's just like, heck no. That was a, probably one of the best decisions we ever made. To, to elope or to get married to or a, both? To elope. Yeah. Get married yeah. and elope. Yeah. 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 We, I think both of our moms had done so many like wedding showers. And I think both of our moms kind of felt like, oh no, this is our turn. This is our moment in the sun here. <laughs> but uh, we really could have cared less about the actual wedding itself. It was, yeah. it was, uh, and we didn't have, there weren't very many people there. It was short notice and, um, and it was a long ways away and it was winter. And so, uh, but it was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah, we called a, it's just so weird because, uh, you know, this is, this shows you how much times have changed. I had uh, a dozen roses sent to the American Airlines gate and they put them on the plane. And so we got, I bought first class tickets. I spent every penny I had on these tickets. And uh, so we get on the plane and this, there's a guy sitting there that I know. He, he was a test pilot for American Airlines. And uh, so he's looking at us, you know, and he says, so what are y'all doing? And I said, well, we just got married, you know, a couple hours ago and we're honeymooning in Dallas. He goes, oh, great. He said, do you eloped? Did you, uh, what do your parents think about that? And I said, well, they don't know. No one knows. We yeah. haven't told anybody. Yeah. And he goes, are you kidding me? I was like, no. He goes, hang on a second. So he goes up in the cockpit and he pulls back this phone that had a long cord on it. And we were sitting right behind the cockpit. And so he goes, here, I want you to call your parents right now and tell them what you've done. I was like, are you serious? And so, yeah, so I called mom and dad and they're like, hey, what's going on? I said, well, we're flying to Dallas. Uh, Dallas? Yeah, it's the last night I got married just a while ago. What? You know, and so anyway. This is a crazy story, but that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm sure they were shocked and happy. <laughs> but this is your show. So uh yeah, you're... Scott, what are we doing talking about you? This is all about me. <laughs> we're talking about my favorite subject. No. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're in Colorado, you get married. Mm -hmm. And uh how long do you stay in Colorado? We were there, I moved to Colorado in 89 we got married in 90 and i was in colorado we were there until 2007 and um my um folks had retired down in this part of texas and we would come and visit and i don't know we just live it's it's changing now because things are growing so rapidly but yeah. um, we moved to this little town of 8,000 people and um just charming in a way that's hard to put into words parades for everything we have a little square we have a we have a polka polka band that plays once a month in the square and people get out and dance and it was just very the german loveliest, down there it's very german and just a lovely place to raise a family and we also were missing um having grandparents at piano recitals and basketball games and so we put our house on the market, just kind of one of those, well, let's just see what happens. And um, it worked out perfectly. Uh, we, were, we went under contract in January, but they didn't want to, they didn't want to close until June 1st, which gave us time to finish out Riley's uh, school year. It was a perfect ending to that chapter. And um, we moved down here and have just loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, <laughs> Pam Peterson was here just uh, over spring break. They were vacationing oh, yeah. down here. And it always kind of makes me chuckle when I hear, uh, like they came all the way from Wichita, Kansas to vacation in my backyard. And I think, yeah. how lucky am I that I get to live in such a spectacular uh, place? So it's been a really, it's a, it's a wonderful community. It's a wonderful community. My Here brothers. I am. I've like got my Chamber of Commerce hat on as I'm selling <laughs> Bernie. <laughs> yeah, my brother's father-in-law, he has a bed and breakfast in Fredericksburg. Yeah. And uh, 
uh, it's just, you know, a lot of people from around here do go to Bernie, Fredericksburg, wineries yeah. and vineyards, and it's just amazing. Lukenbach, you, you know, Lukenbach's like 45 minutes up the road. You got to go get your picture made in front of the Lukenbach post office. And right. There's lots of touristy things to do around here. Actually, I didn't know about that. I'll have to do that it's, next time. Hmm. Yeah, it's just right outside of Fredericksburg. Kind of goes Fredericksburg, Lukenbach, Comfort, Fernie. Kind of that whole. You want me to pull my map, my map down? <laughs> no, I don't believe you. I got you. my map right here. I got my map right here. You know what I did grab, Scott? What's that? Because, you know, this is all about the call high swag. Yeah. I found John's letter jacket. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. I tried to put it on and it weighs like 50 pounds and it must <laughs> be a size extra small because I felt like, you know, Tommy boy, fat guy in a little coat when I had it on. <laughs> so I won't be modeling it, but it, uh, yeah. the call high gear is still wow. strong in our house. That's awesome. And so, yeah, it's, they're heavy, kind of like those uh, aprons they put on you in the dentist office, you know? When It's like a lead apron. Yeah. Totally like a lead apron. Yeah. I can't imagine that ever being comfortable, but. Thank you for listening to the last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 podcast. And we'll be right back after this. Pops Daylight Donuts, man, they've got the best tasting donuts, sausage wraps, pastries in Northeast Oklahoma. And also, if you'll tell the staff there, hey, Scott Townsend said to give me a large spicy pig, they'll give you a free large spicy sausage wrap. But you have to tell them Scott Townsend sent you. So tell them, hey, Scott Townsend told me to tell you to give me a large spicy pig. So there's the offer. There's the there's the call to action. So go to Pops Daylight Donuts. Say hi to Mark for me. And uh, yeah, go to Pops Daylight Donuts and get you some. The other sponsor is Castafly Outdoor Adventures. Adventure, that's where it begins. We look to create and document our moments in time while embracing the majestic wonder and beauty of the great outdoors. Our quest is to explore the back roads of the Ozarks, camping, fishing, and just getting lost. Refresh your spirit and join us on our next adventure. Paul and his crew invite you to subscribe to the Castafly Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. When uh, I was looking, um, you know, so I do research on everybody that I interview. And okay. so I had to, you know, you and I have not spoken in 39 years. I don't even know if we spoke in, high, in, in as the seniors in high school, but um, uh, on your Facebook page, there was something about Simon Sinek. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that because. Are you, um, do you know Simon? So yeah, yeah the you know why Simon? and yeah. leaders eat last and yeah. I've read all those books, you know, mm -hmm. and he has that mm -hmm. accent. It's kind of, what do you call that accent? It's kind of like a mid-atlantic or some kind of you want know to well, talk about yeah and the, it's the not accent, english it's no and and he's um i i might have some of my dates wrong but he was his dad i believe was a diplomat and so they lived in hong kong south africa england and oh. the state so i think the accent is sort of a culmination of of having grown up uh as a global global hmm. child um so yes i i met simon and um his chief of staff in 2009 and uh, did mostly like project work for them hmm. over the years and then in 2014 came on board in a more full-time capacity and uh had headed, uh, headed up their operations and then eventually had the title of uh, chief operating officer for the division, not the author side of his business, but the business that took his IP and put it out into the world. Hmm. And um, last year, I don't know if you heard, but we had a 
like a little interruption in the global economy. There was a little hiccup there. Yeah. Pandemic and a little COVID, of, a little Suez Canal, yeah. you know. Yeah. So we had um, we we had most of our uh, business operations were in live events, which got shut down overnight. Yeah. And so what we spun up there in a matter of just a few weeks was an online class portal. And um, that was big. It was basically like we built Ticketmaster in a matter of weeks and wow. had amazing people around the world. Our programmers were out of Argentina and Germany and, and they really worked 24 seven to make that happen. And that was, that was, my, that was my baby. Um, huh. So pretty intense COVID pivot. And uh, so, I, you know, people talk about all the time they spent doing puzzles and all the time they had during the shutdown. And I'm thinking, no, no, that was not my experience. I worked 24 seven, it was really intense. And, and on top of that was the, the knowing that um, we had like 28 people on the team that I was fighting to keep people employed. Um, so there was a lot of emotional weight to that as well. And Wyatt heading into his senior year, um, it was just a good time to take a pause. So I've been on a pause since October of last year, um, doing consulting work and little things here and there that really things that inspire me and make me happy, but mostly really just focusing on um, being a mom before my last chick left the nest. Hmm. And uh, so it was quite a run and, and quite an interesting experience um, working working with Simon, who's one of the leading, you know, he's a thought leader. He's put some really great content out into the world. Um, yeah. Seems like he works a lot with the military. He does. He loves the military. He has a real passion for the military. Um, hmm. Doesn't have any personal military experience, but he's been invited right. into um, some pretty intense situations and just has a lot of respect for you know, leaders eat last was really rooted in this concept of the higher ranking you are, you should be at the end of the line, um, right. which is contrary to a lot, a lot of the ways um, corporations work. It, <clears throat> I've seen that happen where the big wigs will come in with their entourage and they hole up in a conference room for two days and not say anything to anybody else. And I always wondered, or I always thought to myself, if there ever is a day when I'm to that point, <clears throat> I want to go to the janitor. I want to go to the receptionist. I just, I, I want to just walk around and meet people and find out who these people are and what they do. You know, that's where the rubber hits the road. That's where, that's where the real Absolutely. work happens. It doesn't happen in a conference room. That's just all theater. The, uh, the well, real work happens in the cubicles. I, I have a philosophy that comes partly by um, some of the things he has shared in his TED talk and, and in his books, but also just having been in the workforce for quite a while that, uh, you know, I, I don't believe you can grow a company unless you grow your people and growing people takes time and energy and being there and being present and um, supporting them, you know, through this whole COVID pivot um, I just, I would never ask somebody on my team to do something that I wasn't willing to do myself. And so, um, you know, that was a very close working relationship to get through that. And, uh, and not that I can solve everything, but I can hopefully remove roadblocks and obstacles that help somebody on the team figure out the solution and be their greatest cheerleader. That's um, the key right there. Doesn't happen it doesn't happen everywhere, but it does happen in places that would surprise you. We, we, our school district here in Texas is uh, generally regarded one of the best in Texas. And I happen to know uh, the president of the school board is a very good friend. And I know like their decisions are people first. They really understand if we take care of our people, of our staff, they will take care of our students. And we don't have to solve, we have to make good policy decisions, but we don't have to solve the student problem if we're taking care of our teachers and our administrators and our support staff. And um, what's resulted is 
I could not have asked for a better senior year for Wyatt. And it was because our school board was courageous. We went back to school in August of 2020 and they never once shut the school down for COVID. Um, we never once shut down because of a COVID outbreak. And we had all of the extracurricular activities. We had football, we had basketball, we had prom, we had all the things. I know it was a weird year, but um, as opposed to what that class of 2019, 2020 experience when they went home for spring break and never came back. Mm -hmm. uh, our school district did an amazing job, but I, it's the, it's the people first leadership principles that mm -hmm. I think really drove that. So yeah, uh, the books uh, that we're talking about for those of you listening or watching is Simon Sinek's uh, Start With Why. And the yeah, other one is e e uh, Leaders Eat Last. Mm -hmm. Start With Why, Leaders Eat Last. Um, there was another small book in there that was more like an illustration book um, that was called Together is Better. And then the latest book is called The Infinite Game, which is really good. That's a really good book. Yeah, I think I've got that. Anyway, that's... Uh, the infinite game. Yeah, I've got that. Let's go back to high school real quick. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm back. Uh, it's it's uh, my back's against the time here, uh, against the clock. So I need to speed up. Um, do you have just a few more minutes? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So we'll do the lightning round. I just got the phone with Butch Bolin and ah. I did an interview with him uh, earlier this morning. And so we did a lightning round of questions. And so I thought I would do the same thing with you and see what your thoughts Perfect. are. So Perfect. Um, what car did you drive? In high school? Senior year. I believe I was still driving a 1976 Oldsmobile with white vinyl interior. But here's the thing, Scott, because my dad was a car dealer, the cars are sort of rotating between what he might be wanting to sell. Right. I think I would remember what I was driving my senior year, but I don't actually know if I was still driving that car. And then it was sort of a succession of other vehicles, depending on what was in the driveway, what was in the driveway. Yeah. I never knew. I never knew what car to look for when my mom was picking me up from piano lessons <laughs> or ballet I never knew what she would show up in. So, um, hmm. yeah. Movie. Yeah. Movie. Did you say groovy or movie? Movie. Movie. What movie? Our senior year or our high school? What comes to mind? Um, mm. Star Wars, but I, and I, I probably will get hate mail. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. So oh, I, I do you're remember not, you're going. Not a huge Star Wars fan? Is that what's really? on the wall? You're I know. Not a huge Star Wars fan? Mercy. I know. I know. It's sacrilege <laughs> to people that are um, in it. That's when I remember. I mean, I don't remember the movies, but what I do remember is, and we laugh about this because I would never let my kids do this, but we used to walk from Eastland to Pizza Inn, but you had to do the pipe. Remember, you had to walk across the pipe that was under Highway 75. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. never do that. Like, I never, I never, oh, no, no, sir. You no, ma'am. You, you missed out, Scott. You really haven't lived <laughs> until you've held that cable and you've walked across the pipe. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I was a pipe walker in high school. I mean, you bring up a good point. We did stuff back then that were so innocent and, you know, and, but today you wouldn't let kids walk. I remember when I was in second no third, way in second or third grade I walked almost a mile to the elementary school <laughs> with my little lunch pail and whatnot you know I we went back and visited my hometown Waco Texas and drove that route that route whatever and I told my wife there is no way we would have let Matthew you know walk that far that young yeah. these days yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't let my kids walk the pipe. <laughs> favorite sport in high school? Uh, favorite sport? I played tennis a little bit. Um, so that was probably my favorite recreational activity. I do remember what year was it where we won the bas uh, baseball? Was it our... Greg Brewer and Troxel and... 
Yeah, um, I don't remember what year that was, but that I do remember being at that game, and that was so exciting when our baseball team won state. Um, I thought our our Friday nights were just a blast, just to go be with everybody at the stadium and right <clears throat> band and yeah, yeah, the cold the fall, yeah. Uh, prom. You go to prom? I did go to prom. Um, I went to prom with Terry Cummins, who went to Dewey, who was my boyfriend at the time. And uh, yeah, I mean, I look back, I have to kind of chuckle. I wore a, this may not mean anything to you, but uh, Gunny Sacks was like the brand. Gunny Sacks? Uh, Gunny Sacks was the name of the brand. And they pretty much look like gunny sacks. They were, uh, I don't know, my prom dress was like a biohazard suit. It was white and it was a collar and long sleeves. And uh, now oh, when they go to prom, they look like they're headed to the Academy Awards. And right, so right. Only right. modest pictures um, from prom. And then there was after prom, which we got to stay out late. And then uh, I do distinctly remember I had to go to work the next day at uh dairy berry jewelers so i was up at you know probably in at 5 a.m and and spent the whole day working oh, and that man. was sort of a tough adulting moment like what do you mean i have to get up i just had prom right <clears throat> give like me a, a break federal holiday why would i work the day after prom but i did so wow um tv show what was your favorite tv show in high school out of the three channels that we had to watch. ABC, CBS, and, and the fourth one, PBS, you know. PBS. Um, actually, I, I didn't watch Beretta. TV. Beretta. <laughs> Gunsmoke. Man Manic. Gunsmoke. Um, I do think, didn't MTV come out our senior year? Uh, yeah, uh, that's a good trivia question. I, I, I was just I, looking at it yesterday. I don't I'm remembering. Know. A with little Martha into... Quinn and JJ. JJ. Yeah. Uh, what's it? Uh, anyway, and what was the first video? It was a uh, video killed the radio star. Was the first video Probably. on TV? Yeah, yeah. I, I am. Re I'm remembering when I think about TV. I'm remembering. Um, I'm remembering MTV, and maybe I watched like Monty Python on a Saturday <laughs> night. That's what Butch mentioned. Yeah, oh yeah that's, that's funny yeah so <clears throat> to wrap things up the same question i ask everybody uh as uh you know your what would you tell what would you tell your younger self as you're walking mm -hmm. off the graduation platform and uh, you just got your little diploma and Pinnell shaking your hand and you grab lori list by the hand and say okay so this is this is what you need to know. And, you know, <clears throat> that's not so hypothetical because you could do that with your own kids, you know, yeah. Wyatt or whoever. Um, like I was telling Butch, you know, we can, we have that. Actually, we do have that opportunity with our own kids um, because they are, you know, our legacy. Not to get too philosophical here, but um, what would you, what would you tell Lori? Um. I should have thought about this before, although I'm just going to source from some of the things that I have felt like were important to share with my kids. And I think you have to sort of ground that in what did I wish I like, why do I feel like this is important? Well, I wish maybe somebody had said this to me. Uh, right. uh, two, two are coming to mind. One is um, say what you mean and mean what you say. Um, I think it's important for them to get comp to, for them to be confident using their own voice and um, standing strong in what they believe. Uh, standing. Did strong you have Did you have trouble with that? Yes, totally. I, me growing up was a total people pleaser. So, oh. so you know the 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 downside of that is that you never really know who you are because you're constantly morphing into what you think other people expect you to be and so I wanted to be the good girl and so yeah so you adapt that that took a long time and it's one of the reasons why I felt like it was important was I, I don't know I, I don't know if your kids ever found oh gosh 
sure be nice to have a milkshake about now. And it'd be like, well, if you want a milkshake, just ask for a milkshake. Stand in the confidence of, I don't know, it seemed like every time they would sort of hint, I would go, what do you, what do you, what do you, and also like meaning what you say, which I think calls you to be thoughtful uh, before something actually comes out of your mouth that you can't then undo. Um, the other thing I think as a bit of a recovered perfectionist, I think I always thought like when this happens, when, when, when you graduate from college, then everything will be great. And it's sort of that realization of life is just full of challenges and obstacles. Um, circumstances don't define us. What defines us is how we show up in the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish 17, 18 year old Lori had realized that is unachievable. And what you really focus on is resilience and grit uh, because there's just always going to be a challenge. And so get better, get better and better at handling the challenges that come your way instead of resisting them because they just are what they are. Um, mm -hmm. Deep Thoughts by Lori Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you, you know, yeah. Growing up, you think, I don't want anything bad to happen. Well, listen up. Bad things are going to happen. And so it's how you deal with those things. Yeah, sure. You know, when it's a great day, it's a great day. But if it's a bad day, don't let that wreck you. You know, yeah. just just uh, handle it. And handle those, it. Those that can handle it better than others usually uh, come out better. So yeah, I would totally agree with that. Final yeah. thoughts by Lori Jackson. Oh, to all the Wildcats watching, listening. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know that I have anything really profound, Scott, other than this has been, um, I've enjoyed, I've watched, um, I'm not completely caught up, but I have watched Donnie's, mm -hmm. I've watched uh, Stacy's, mm -hmm. and super funny. Uh, who was the, who was the first, oh, Chris. Chris? Yeah. And I know I have Glenn's and um, Brett. Brett's to watch. Mm -hmm. But I, this has been, I, I just want to say kudos to you for kicking this off. And um, I don't know, it was involved. This was like a lifelong goal of yours to have a podcast or maybe not lifelong because podcasts weren't around, but in the last few years, a goal to have a podcast, but kudos to you for living into that dream and making it happen. And I have sure enjoyed the, um, the episodes from our former classmates. Yeah. Well, thanks for being a part of it. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Well, okay. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for your time and giving up, giving up your time and just sharing with us, you know, stuff that only us wildcatters really know anything about, you know, can appreciate. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, Scott. I think you may need to do a reconnaissance mission and go find out if the pipe still exists. Can we still walk the pipe at the 40 year reunion? Where's the pipe? Now, where is it? Um, if you were crossing over from the, and I haven't been back, I don't even know if the road still looks <laughs> the same, but if you were going from Eastland like to McDonald's, yeah, it was part of 75 that had like a drainage or a creek underneath it. And the yeah. pipe was like, I don't know, it was like two or three feet in diameter. I don't, and I don't know what it was transporting, but it ran sort of right along the side of 75, but down below the roadway. And then there was a cable above it that you could just hold mm -hmm. on to. And that I got you know. to McDonald's? Well, I, yeah. Although I think it might've been Pizza Inn that we were headed towards to stand on the, yeah. This oh, is before no. we could drive. This is before we could drive yeah, to the yeah. canteen, so. Right. <laughs> all right, well, uh, thanks Lori for all your time and your generosity and walking down memory lane with everybody. It was great. You bet. you bet. Thanks for asking, Scott. You bet. So anyway, so for Lori Jackson, Lori List Jackson, for those of you who know her by her uh, maiden name. For Lori List Jackson, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for watching, listening to the Last of the Wildcats 1982 podcast. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you later.
The Last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 podcast is a Dizzo Man production. For more episodes, visit the Last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.